Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and we've got another Blade Show preview for you today. Blade Show is at the, uh, the end of this week from when this video is posting and we've got some stuff to show you from CRKT. Three new collaborations with none other than Michael Walker, who, if you're unfamiliar with his name, is highly, highly influential on the modern knife scene, even if his name is not uh, at the tip of everyone's tongues nowadays. I'm going to hold up the, uh, the first of the collabs right here. Now, who is Michael Walker? Most famously known as the inventor of the liner lock, the modern iteration anyway of the liner lock. Also credited with the, being the first to use the ball detent in conjunction with the liner lock as part of what gives the, uh, that lock its magic. I mean, shake a stick nowadays, the modern flipper craze owes its very existence to Michael Walker's innovations right here. But those are just the things he's most famous for. He's also made something like over 20 other locking mechanisms. His work is incredibly rare. There, nowadays, there's not a lot, uh, actually none currently in production that I know of uh, in terms of production collaborations with Michael Walker, and his customs are super rare. He only makes one knife at a time. Each one is different from the last. He never makes the same knife twice. And as I've heard it described, he sits down with a rectangle that's going to wind up being the blade and a rectangle that's going to wind up being the handle, starts with the lock and moves out from there and lets the process flow organically. And his stuff is so good that as I've heard it told when he does exhibit at shows, oftentimes it's other knife makers who are the first in line to buy his stuff because he's that well respected and his stuff is just that dang good. Given that admittedly very brief overview uh, and very abridged overview of the man's accomplishments, it's really cool to see a new production design collaboration on the market from Michael Walker. And it's especially cool for me at least to see it from CRKT as well. He's got some nice history with that brand. Probably the most recognizable form there is the LOX system, the Lake and Walker knife safety that he co-developed with Ron Lake. He's also had stuff like the blade lock knife is another classic design from CRKT's lineup. But now we have three more. This first one right here is called the Monument. And there are two versions of it right here, which is somewhat appropriate because remember when I mentioned before that there's only, he only makes one of any given knife and never makes the same knife twice. This design, the Monument, is the one exception as far as I'm aware. He's made like six of these and that's it. And then he moved on to the next thing. Now we'll start with the first version right here. These knives are premium. They are Italian made. If you're familiar with uh, CRKT's Italian partners, you know how good a job they do, which is to say fantastic. And a cool thing, Michael Walker got his start before making knives. He was actually a jewelry maker. And it's cool to see that the production company has been able to kind of integrate some of those design cues that you see in some of his custom work on a much more attainable level. Still not cheap, mind you, this uh, version right here, 275 for the standard M390 bladed version. That blade length is just over three inches long. I'd call that a modified sheep's foot with a high flat grind. You've got some nice detailing like the crowned spine on the knife, makes it very comfortable when choking up with a finger, also makes it very nice to look at too. The handles are titanium, really cool kind of jeweled fish scale texture here on the back and on the front. We've got a damasteel pivot on these knives. This is blue tongue pattern damasteel on both sides. And if you check out Michael Walker's Instagram right near the top right now, at least while we are, are filming this video, he's got a knife using this same kind of pivot material. So again, pulling those cues right down from the customs. The pocket clip is milled got some intricate patterning going on there and this small wheel for the pinch point, which is pretty cool. Sometimes you'll see a cylindrical bearing or sometimes a ball bearing there. The wheel is uh, even less common, makes it even cooler. And given we're dealing with a Michael Walker design here, we've got a liner lock, very appropriate. There you can see it's inset for more class, very highly finished. The lockup is supremely solid. And the action we're dealing with ball bearings in the pivot here is also excellent. Price on this one is going to be 275 if I didn't mention that already. And I should also say these are all going to be limited as well. These aren't going to be an ongoing thing. So make sure to get them 
if you are interested. If you want to spend a little bit more money, you want something a little more intricate, you've got the Damasteel bladed version here. This is going to be $500. The Damasteel here is the rose pattern, and it's got all the same great things as the M390 blade going on, just with more added visual flair, but a slightly more subdued handle, still with the intricacies and the jewel-like quality of the engraved faux inlays right here, but a different but equally striking look. Now the Damasteel material there is actually a powder metallurgy product. You should get performance somewhere on par with something like CPM 154. So it'll be tougher than your M390 on that base version. It's funny to think of the $275 version being the base version, but the M390 will give you more edge retention taken just between the two. Equally fantastic. I gotta say, I really love the, uh, the slightly more muted aesthetics of the handle here on this one just very, very nice. Next, we have the Pursue. Here it is. Price on this is going to be $400. Similar overall size to the Monument, but different kind of vibes overall. The blade, of course, is a more conventional drop point design. This is the super dense twist Damasteel for the pattern. Higher flat grind, but not quite as high as the Monument, and you're dealing with roughly the same thickness of blade there. So outright slicing geometry, if you're putting any of these to use, the monument will be a little bit slicier. This knife will be a little bit tougher in the way it cuts. And you do have a swedge there near the tip to remove a bit of drag if you're slicing through something with that tip area. We've also got, from a functional standpoint, since we're talking about that right now, thumb studs and a front flipping kind of squared off section here, as opposed to a conventional rear flipper without thumb studs. The, the thumb studs work excellently. Ball bearings in the pivot again. The front flipper, you all know I'm not the best at front flippers in general, but the slow walk on it for me works perfectly smoothly. Let's try. I haven't done the flip yet. I'll do it first time on camera. A little bit of wrist, no problem. The handle is dark matter fat carbon, which is essentially uh, has the look of marbled carbon fiber with this gold kind of marbled in with it, this gold coloration actually. I think it's 24 karat gold, actually. The pivot on the front is Mother of Pearl, and I believe titanium there on the back. Same pocket clip as you saw on the Monument, nice and intricate with that wheel for the pinch point. Also feels really good in the hand. Let me compare the two side by side. Yeah, the Monument's fine there. I would never complain about this, but the Pursue here just you know kind of fills out the grip just a little bit more taken between the two at the very least. Truly excellent looking all around. You've got that crown spine on this, just like on the Monument. I didn't mention that before. Similar treatment to the back spacers on both of these knives as well. Very, very nice. Truly premium. And it's cool to continue to see, or it's cool to see CRKT continuing to put some energy in to the higher end products as well as their normal uh, baseline products at the same time. Very, very cool. Make sure to check out the rest of our Blade Show coverage later this week. I believe we will be visiting CRKT's booth. We might even have a visit with Michael Walker lined up. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. But in the meantime, check the links below for these knives. They are available for order right now by the time you're seeing this video. And don't forget about our Knife Rewards program as well, because if you're going to purchase one of these knives, it sure would be nice to earn some free money to spend on a future one. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera, even though I didn't say anything today. See you at Blade Show.